Haley Wickenheiser hired by the Toronto Maple Leafs, so she's mm-hmm. going to work in player development, and that's it's an amazing thing. Um, f- f- the first reaction would be to think that well, a female is finally cracking through a, a male dominated industry, and that is true. But Haley has so much hockey expertise, so much knowledge, um, so much understanding of the game. Uh, she is she is someone with so much to give regardless of um, being in a men's realm or a women's realm, w- why not become a part of the, the biggest hockey team in the game? And uh, at least in the last little while, one that sh- is showing to be the most forward-thinking, most open-minded team in the game as well. Haley Wickenheiser, welcome to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, st- strap on a jersey, strap on a hat, strap on a jacket, and um, let's get down to business. Yeah, I think this is, I mean, I could, first of all, I could see this coming a mile away when she was invited as a guest coach in June at the development camp. You could see that, um, you know, you could just imagine that they were going to bring her in and she had expressed some interest uh, in it. And so I'm not, I wasn't surprised by the announcement. And once you think about it, it's, it's a no brainer. I mean, I honestly, it's like, and this, this is the, this is the, the, the mentality I think most fans approach things with. We don't care if it's a woman or somebody of who, a non-Caucasian or, you know, who cares if it's, if it helps the Toronto Maple Leafs win, that's all fans care yeah. about. And, and Kyle Dubas said it, said it really well yesterday. He's like, you know, the more diverse your organization, the better, the, the better your decision-making, the better your operation. Absolutely. You know? and, and, and I think I, I, I applaud that this coming from an organization and, you know, I'm old enough to remember this is an organization that wouldn't draft a Russian because they had an owner who was an anti-communist curmudgeon yeah. you know, in, in Harold Ballard. They, you know, so teams like Vancouver and Detroit and Buffalo who drafted the McGillneys and the Berets and the Fedorovs, they got the, you know, New Jersey who brought uh, Slava Fatisov to the NHL. They improved themselves. Whereas Toronto didn't because they had a close minded idiot for, for an owner. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's that, you know, I want a, 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 uh, uh, you know, a franchise that is forward thinking. And I think that you can see from, you know, the, and, you know, I know we've had our problems with analytics, but by using analytics as a tool and by being open to other avenues in terms of bringing in the best people, I applaud the Leafs for this. I love analytics, but at the end of the day, the analytics are tracking human beings, right? Uh, Harold Ballard would still be a, a reputable owner in the NFL be- today, would he not? <laughs> Him and Jerry wow. Jones hanging out. Um, yeah, Harold Ballard such a caricature of, you know, a ridiculous era. Um, but he took over the team from Conn Smythe, did he not? And obviously Conn Smythe is an absolute legend. Mm-hmm. He's got the Maple Leaf Gardens built in, what, eight months, nine months? It's, and it's the, the, the mecca uh, of hockey, in, in my opinion. But, you know, Ballard started out as a guy who you thought you could entrust the organization with. And unfortunately, he just turned into a complete madman. And as time went on, and the city, which was once Toronto the Good, a very uh, Anglo-Saxon kind of straight and narrow, everything's closed up by 7, 7 p.m. kind of town, started to evolve into something that, is, that it's become today. And this is one of the most cosmopolitan cities on the planet with high, forward thinking. Harold Ballard became, just became so marginalized for, for as, as racist and homophobic and as just terrible and, and, and as he was. He was almost laughed at because the rest of... He just was falling behind the way the rest of the society around him was evolving. Ballard did not have the the market cornered on that. I mean, you have a guy like Bill Wirtz in Chicago who basically wouldn't let his team on cable television because he thought that it would it would stop people from going to see uh, games at the Chicago Stadium. So, you know, he did not have the market cornered Fossils. on the- yeah, exactly, and thank thankfully most of them are are gone, and uh, you know if they aren't gone, they're on their way out. I'm so proud of Haley Wickenheiser for everything she's done for uh, women's hockey, for uh, Hockey Canada, uh, w- winning us gold medals, being a, a, a mentor and a leader and, and a, a visionary that um, young hockey players can, can aspire to becoming. I mean, look at women's hockey. Look at girls' hockey in, uh, in Canada and around the world. Haley Wickenheiser um, is, you know, not one of the first to play women's hockey, but clearly the first um, super 
duper star. I mean, there have been plenty of, of female hockey stars to come out of Toronto or out of Canada, but Haley Wickenheiser has transcended um, so many levels and obviously playing uh, men's professional hockey and now doing this. I mean, she's a, she's a trailblazer in many ways. And I know some people don't want to talk about it um, uh, based on gender and we don't have to, but it is reality. And this is a, a really important moment for as much as we might want to um, sidestep it a little bit. It, it is a really important moment on, on, on so many fronts and because of so many factors and, and, who knows where she goes from here? Maybe she becomes a general manager of a team one day. Maybe she becomes the head coach. I'm all for it. I'm so excited about it. I'm really proud of her. I'm proud of the Maple Leafs.